The sport we know as football started in this very city 140 years ago, and since then it's become a worldwide phenomenon. But still, there are issues arise over race. There's only ever been two British Asian footballers playing in the Premier League. Why? Well, I'm about to find out. There are just 2.8 million people of Asian origin living in the UK. But until 2004, there had never been a British Asian playing top flight football. Last season, there were just three players in the entire football league. Q Sporting Bengal. The club was created by a group of Bangladeshis from Tower Hamlets, upset with the lack of Asians in mainstream football. Starting in the Sunday League, they became the first ever semi-professional Asian club in the UK. So why aren't Asians getting their chance at the higher levels? Personally, if you ask me, I don't think we're good enough at the moment. Or we have other commitments outside of football. Um, in terms of say, family or even religious, perhaps sometimes. Which doesn't necessarily allow our youngsters to participate in football as much as they need to, to attain a certain standard of playing in order for them to progress into the professional game. Um, it could be that, or it could be some or lack of commitment sometimes, because the talent's there, but talent alone ain't going to carry you anywhere. You need to put the hard work in. Sporting Bengal's prestige has brought in former Asian professionals. Shahid Ahmed captains the side after being released from Wickham Wanderers in 2005. Shahid reached a level many Asians only dream about. So what makes his story so different? I think a lot of the parents um, don't provide that support you require and um, that push into into football and um, that encouragement um, it could also be lifestyle um, some of the, the Asian lifestyle the way we grow up the diets we have it's a bit difficult to sort of um, compete at a higher level but when I sort of coach I try and share my experiences with the younger players um, I'll try and train them and work on certain things that I think will help them uh, mobility flexibility um, so certain things I think I'll try and work with, I'll try and explain to them what the expectations are, how it can be in a change room. It can be very hard, it can be very good, um, and, and what to expect really from, from my experience. And that's, that's the way I sort of, I talk to players if they, if they have any questions, they always approach me, and I'll support, sort of support them that way. Shahid chose to take a chance with a career in football, one that many don't take. Ravi Jagpal is one of those Asians. Ravi was offered three semi-professional contracts at three London-based teams, but chose to turn down all three. When I, after I went to the tryouts and I got into two of the clubs actually, but I realised it's four training sessions a week, which because I'm going into my 18 next year, I can't dedicate that much time to it, I have to focus more on my education. So that's one of the main reasons I decided to reject them. At my two seasons at, my, at St Joseph's, I was the only Asian player I really came across, not only in my club, um, when we came into other matches and other venues, there wasn't many Asians there. So I think it's just if they worked a bit harder like to go to the tryouts and try to get into the teams, well, I reckon that would probably boost up the amount of Asians. Whilst Ravi still may be at school, his door is not entirely closed. But his mindset appears to follow the same scepticism that sees sport as a risky career move. Apathy towards football is one the FA is trying to change within Asian society. Through projects such as FERD, they hope to give people a fair chance within the game. FERD started 20 years ago by a group of Sheffield United supporters wanting to combat racism by building bridges between different communities. About to move into a new £2.5 million youth centre, former director Howard Holmes insists the importance of grassroots football to increase Asian participation. There are some other factors in place that stop in Asians making the breakthrough. And I, and I think that... Um, you know, one of those factors is that, is that there's not the, the same level of interest amongst their, their parents and, and, wi and the, wider sort of co the wider community in, in, in people making it professional. And there's, there's a lot of interest in watching football, but trying to get people to commit at the base of that pyramid is difficult. You know, commitment now is, it's, you know, it's five or ten pound a week when you add the money up together for your fees, for your you know, if you're washing your kit and so on. And then there's the turning up at the games, you know, every Sunday morning and so on. See, school football has collapsed in the UK and I think school football would have been great for Asian players trying to break through because it would, have, it would probably have been free for them and all organised by their teachers. Now you have to join a club. A number of professional clubs are trying to integrate more British Asians through various schemes. Crystal Palace, based in the multicultural hub of South London, is one of those trying to make that difference. 
Crystal Palace has been working with the Zesh Raymond Foundation to encourage younger Asians to get involved with sport, which doesn't just mean playing. QPR and Chelsea have also announced plans to join the Eagles setup. Created by the first ever British Asian Premiership footballer Zesh Raymond, Zesh was told early on by coaches that he would never make it into the game because of his diet and culture, of which he proved them wrong. He hopes his foundation will lead more Asians to follow suit. With Zesh playing in Hong Kong, the foundation is run by his brother and former Fulham coach Riz Raymond. Starting in Bradford, the scheme has expanded nationwide, from Bolton all the way to Croydon. From late night five side matches to fitness classes, kids can also learn the prospects of becoming a qualified coach. There's Asians all up and down the country who love the game, but I think for them, I've had emails from kids when they get into coaching, you know, I've tried to say to them, call your local FA. They don't know who the local FAs are. You know, it's just educating the younger people in colleges, schools, and then signpost them to the, to the right people as well. Obviously, we use, use our background and our experiences, we can hopefully pass them on to the right areas. Guys who come here relate to them because of my background, their background. They feel, I think they feel safe as well. Uh, but we do need to see the parents getting more involved, especially from a young age. Not just opening its doors to Asians, the foundation is an all-inclusive project that is trying to bring disengaged communities together. Initially when we started this foundation it was probably aimed, at, I'll be honest, at Asians sort of thing. But as you've seen, I've seen Croydon, it's a diverse community. You've got the blacks, you've got the whites, you've got the Asians. What we've turned it into is a social inclusion project whereby you've got a diverse range of people who just want to come play football. The beautiful game though does have a dark element. Recently racism reared its ugly head with a series of high profile cases that asked the question whether racism in football still exists. If so, could that be a reason for such an underrepresentation of British Asians? Coaching four or five years ago at Fulham, I, was, I went to the community departments for them. I like, got called a packy, but I've called it all my life as well, so you sort of get used to it as well. But I think it's still at the grassroots. Um, a lot more can still be done. Organisation like Kick Out does some great work, show racing the red card, but I think a lot more still needs to be done as well. But you need the hierarchy of the FA getting more involved, you know, supporting projects like this, which, you know, are integrating the whole community. You know, it's not a case of it's you and us, you know, so you'll see here today, kids more backgrounds to attend. This, this is still, you know, a racist society in many ways, right, unfortunately. Um, and people might say, well, what have we been doing for the last 15 years? If, you know, my answer to that would be, well, if we weren't doing stuff and if football wasn't taking it seriously, then things would be a whole lot worse. Whilst unfortunately there still might be signs of racism plaguing the game, there does not appear to be a sign of racism stopping Asians making it at the highest level. Most of the experts in the field have suggested that the lack of encouragement from the family or community has led many to opt away from the sport. But changes in attitudes could hopefully have a beneficial effect. Schemes like FERD and the Zesh Raymond Foundation are doing well to integrate Asians into the game. 20 years ago, there were very few black British footballers. Now just over 20% of the football league comprises black or mixed race players. The future certainly looks bright, but perhaps what the English game needs is the first ever Asian superstar to spark a frenzy that will see British Asians at all levels of the game, from coaching all the way to the Premier League. Desi nu tenu net daro na pejouga.